the secret of my success. Before every matchup, I pump up with this arrogance. It's today's man in a classic can. The fragrance that overpower, overwhelms, and pins down the competition. Arrogance for men until we meet. Hello and welcome to OSW Review, the old school wrestling video podcast. Filmed in glorious Grapple Vision and encoded with blast processing, we chronologically critique the Hulkamania era pay per view by pay per view. Which came first, the rooster or the egg? <laughs> Terry Taylor may be gone, but there's a mystery yet to be cracked at the 1990 Survivor Series. I'm Sean Mooney here for Coliseum Video's presentation of the WWF Survivor Series, where only the strong survive. And this year's Thanksgiving Day tradition has some added features that will make this video cassette a true classic. For the first time in Survivor Series history, there will be a grand finale match of survival. At the end of the evening, the survivors of all the matches will climb back into the ring to determine just who has the greatest will to survive. And let's not forget about this giant egg behind me. Once the action starts and this place heats up, who knows how fast it'll hatch. Also throughout the evening, we'll be roaming the arena to talk to some of you, the fans, to get your thoughts on this Thanksgiving spectacular. Without further delay, let's get this 1990 Survivor Series underway. It's the Survivor Series, the epitome of tag team competition as the immortal Hulk Hogan and the Earthquake. Tap into respective teams of the Big Boss Man and Dino Bravo. Joining up with Hacksaw Jim Duggan, Haku, Tugboat, the Barbarian, the Hulkamaniacs versus the Natural Disasters. Team Captains, the American Dream, Dusty Rhodes, and the Million Dollar Man, Ted DiBiase. Join up with Coco Beware and a mystery partner, along with the Anvil, Greg Amber Valentine, Bret Hart, the Honky Talk Man, the Dream Team versus the Million Dollar Team. Team Captains Nikolai Volkov and Sergeant Slaughter. Join up with Tito Santana, Mara Zukov, Bushwhacker Butch, Sato, Bushwhacker Luke and Tanaka, it's the Alliance versus the Mercenaries. Snake the Snake Roberts and the model Rick Martell, captain and respective teams of the Superfly, the Warlord, Marty Janetti, the Mighty Hercules, Shawn Michaels, Paul versus the Visionaries. World Wrestling Federation Champion, the Ultimate Warrior, and Mr. Perfect, lead team members, Texas Tornado, Crash, along with Animal, Axe, Hawk, Smash, it's the Warriors versus the Perfect Team. It's the Survivor Series! We're back once again, it's your host, the abominable Jay Hunter, accompanied as always by the two Steves. One's cracked, the other is a ding dong. <laughs> <laughs> it's 1990 Survivor 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 Series, and it's coming up right now. November 22nd from the Hartford Civic Centre in Hartford, Connecticut, with 16,000 fans in attendance, 3,000 comps, and 380,000 people watching at home. 
a cold open as Sean Mooney gets over the concept of the grand finale Survivor Series match and a giant egg that threatens to hatch tonight and Vince kills his throat running down the card. Commentators tonight are Gorilla Monsoon and Roddy Piper who exclaims that the army will get the pay-per-view for free but he's charging Saddam double to watch and make some kind of horse nose impression. He had a fantastic haircut as well. He's going for the uh, Farrah Fawcett, you know, with the, the little layers going, going back. <laughs> thought that was hilarious. And uh, at the Rumble 91, he'll have a beehive. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Perfect's theme hits as we fast forward to 2012 as the world champion is curtain jerking the pay-per-view. <laughs> It's the perfect team, Mr. Perfect and the three members of Demolition, Axe, Smash and Crush versus the Ultimate Warriors. It's the Ultimate Warrior, the Texas Tornado, Kerry Von Eric, and the Legion of Doom, Hawk and Animal. I think they're actually called the Warriors in this one. They were the Ultimate Warriors last year, so if they're only the Warriors this year... They're going backwards. They're, they're not as good <laughs> as they were. So like, let's stick with the Ultimate Warriors. If I may, there is actually a legitimate reason why these should be called the Warriors. Because we have the Ultimate Warrior, we have the Modern Day Warrior, Texas Tornado, and the Road Warriors, Legion of Doom. Mm. I've never even considered that. That's very good. An awesome point about this pay-per-view is that all of the teams have team names. And we're continuing with the four on four. And we've got one more added gimmick of the night. The Survivor Survivor Grand Finale match, where the winners of... Each match will go into a uh, Ultimate Survivor Series, a new Survivor Series match, pitting the heels versus the faces to see who's the real survivor. I'd imagine that's why Warrior was on first, because they knew he was going to be gassed and they knew he was going to be in the main event. They wanted to give him as much rest time yeah. as possible. But I thought that the gimmick itself, how the grand finale thing is phenomenal. But I'm sure you were both thinking it. It's like, who decided on who, what team you'd be put in? Because in wrestling kayfabe logic, there's no such thing as bad guys and good guys. There's the guys you like and the guys you don't like. So in this case, it just so happened, and fortunately, the bad guys are put with the bad guys and the good guys are put with the good guys. And who decided on those teams? Uh, President Jack Tunney. All right. <laughs> <laughs> it just worked out really well that Hogan didn't team with, like, DBS or something. <laughs> exactly, exactly. I hated it. I thought it was stupid. I think it defeats the purpose of having little mini feuds going into the show. So you get a show that is just kind of a show booked into itself and it doesn't run into anything else. So I didn't really like it. The entire World Wrestling Federation agrees with you because, well, we never saw it again. So it obviously Bam. was a failure. But I think it was one of the greatest things I've ever heard of. I think what made it even cooler is that when you had the WWF magazine, they actually had a pullout where they'd show you all the team names and you could cross out who stayed and who survived and <laughs> like who's the, going um, forward. Uh, World Cup, you know, when you get your pull out and you're filling in all the group stages. I love that shit, though. Alright, so let's run down the pay-per-view. Right, the perfect team versus the lovely Warriors. <laughs> <laughs> the heels enter the ring, Team Captain Mr. Perfect last. Then we cut to the faces backstage with Mean Gene. Uh, nothing promos, but I noticed Warrior was speaking much faster than usual, making him even more incomprehensible. He says, we're not close to perfect... There's no medicine for what we have, and Mean Gene replies with, very good. <laughs> <laughs> Did you notice that Warrior also had a whopper new haircut? Someone got the perming him. It was wonderful. And Axe had a bit of a new haircut as well. It was kind of a bit poofy or something. I've written down here, I think he got hair plugs. Yeah. So the faces get separate entrances. First, Texas Tornado, who has no problem getting into a ring with four heels. <laughs> Uh, the Legion of Dune, Hawk and Animal, and the World Wrestling Federation Champion, the Ultimate Warrior at last. Wearing his gorgeous white strap, Winged Eagle. This is actually an anachronistic anomaly here, where Mr. Perfect had actually already gained the Intercontinental title from the Tornado at a Superstars taping on November 19th. But the Superstars wouldn't air for another month, so... Yeah, Tornado's still holding the belt up. The Didn't we give out about this exact thing last podcast? Yep. Yeah. A warrior's been the sixth man in the LOD demolition feud since the summer, so this is what he's doing, and it's killed his heat. Could he not face Earthquake? Is he not your world champion? Why can't they have had him in the second last match and then do nothing in the final match until the final? He could spot? just steamroll people. Yeah, in the it's is it worse event? to be? Isn't it worse to be on like the second last match than it is to be on the first match? 
like the second last match was the piss break match, yeah. you know. Yeah. And uh, yeah, being the sixth wheel in a tag feud is horrible. How are you going to ever get over as world champion? Yep. To kick us off, <clears throat> Animal Pearl Harbors and tackles Smash. As per usual with Survivor Series bookings, since you need, you know, six, seven people to be eliminated, people get taken out with clotheslines and elbow drops and that yeah. kind of thing. And surprise, surprise, it's demolition again. All right, the first elimination is when Warrior shoulder tackles Axe and then a splash and gets the three. Warrior murders the heels. Then Mr. Perfect continues his Ziggler super bumps as the heels work over Hawk. Think LOD or got a job? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> the match disintegrates into a tag team brawl and both get out of looking weak as both LOD and Demolition are eliminated. We've given out about this, I think, three of the four years that these guys get jobbed out nearly every single year. Pretty much the same again. This leaves Perfect on his own versus Warrior and Tornado. Uh, just, uh, Hawk had somebody pinned. One of the de- members of Demolition. The other guy gets in to break up the pin. Then Animal gets in to <laughs> break them up. And Hawk is one of the people that gets disqualified. Yeah. He's the legal man. He, his pin got broken up. And he's he just wrestling. Himself. Like, yeah. And yeah. he gets disqualified as well. But then in the fracas... He gets his redemption on the referee. Did you see, he, he kicks the referee, and the referee can't react because then he'll have to take a ref pump, which would ruin the match. So he just kind of rubs it off and moves nice. on. I just have to mention at this point, when Perfect goes over the top rope, they establish that there's round robin rules and that if someone goes out, someone else from the team can go in because Smash comes in. All right? So that's how he, no tag necessary is what really? the count was. First match, yep. Okay, so. I assume later on in the night that's oh. <laughs> Believe it or not, I wasn't angry at this double DQ because I thought it made sense in the story of, of these two teams. Because last time we had uh, Legion of Doom cost Demolition the belt for the hearts and they promised to get Legion of Doom before they were going to go for their belts. So I wasn't that angry with this double DQ. Warrior and Tornado have a fun brainstorm in the ring where Warrior holds Tornado's head and runs in place. <laughs> he does that a lot in this show. It's his little uh, rain dance. <laughs> the ref starts his fast count, but both Warrior and Perfect make it back inside before 10. A young Shane McMahon does nothing as Warrior fucks in and over the guardrail. Holy shit, did you see the speed of the ref counts in this pay per view? Yeah. Holy, they really wanted to get that in. After a shoulder to the post and exposed turnbuckle spot, Perfect hits the Perfect Plex on Tornado and gets the three. So it's down to Perfect versus Warrior. Warrior kicks out of the Perfect Plex for the first time in Perfect's career and no, no, wasn't really mentioned. It, yeah, and but at least he didn't kick out at like one and a half. It was like a two and a half kind of. Yeah. yeah. Hennig gets the heat until Warrior turns the tide, hulks up, and hits the shoulder tackle and splash for the 1-2-3, and books himself a spot on the face side of the Survivor's Survivor Series match. Myth match, but I enjoyed the booking. Uh, I thought that the tag team scene was handled well, and Warrior, despite being in the opener, he looked strong, and he pinned a few people, so, eh, it was okay. Yeah, it was acceptable. Yeah, did the job. You were probably going to be happy about this, Steve. Also you. (laughs) After a run of 12 pay-per-views and 14 episodes of OSW Review, this is Axe's final WWF pay-per-view appearance. Smash and Crush continue onwards as Demolition, but they're not too long for this world either. So Axe himself would go to New Japan, he'd reform Demolition with Demolition Hooks! And later Demolition Blast! Blast! (laughs) On the indie circuit. Fuck. So are you gonna miss Axe? I will, because I thought he was clearly the best out of the three of them. And his team are doomed without this man. Because Crush fucking sucks. He's terrible. He's got the worst haircut in the fell as well. i probably go along those lines, actually. I thought Axe was my favourite out of the, the and three. And he just got his hair done. <laughs> <laughs> Backstage, Sean Mooney interviews the Million Dollar Team where DiBiase cuts a classic promo on the face team and says his mystery partner will be a very big surprise and a rare occurrence in wrestling where he makes good on it. (laughs) So we got the Dream Team, which is the team captain, Dusty Rhodes, uh, no sapphire, she turned heel at the last pay-per-view, Coco Beware in a hot pink, as in the third Heart Foundation member maybe? And the Heart Foundation, the WWF Tag Team Champions, Brett and Anvil. Would, would they call Coco the Blackheart? Oh. Mm. You like that, don't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
if I agree, am I racist? No, you're just awesome. <laughs> <laughs> so um, just before the match starts, Roddy Piper mentions that something about Brett losing a brother. Dean Hart, so he's the fifth oldest of the Hart children. He died the day before Survivor Series due to uh, chronic nephritis, which is just kidney disease, at 36. And Brett was really pissed off at Vince because he barely acknowledged it to him backstage. So Piper said, all right, I'll just bring it up on the pay-per-view. Nice. So that's very nice of him, isn't it? Yeah, but still, I mean, for the fact that Brett's... He's at a resting at a pay for you the day after his brother's death. I mean, this this business is scum, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Fucking Karen, he's like the dream team versus the million dollar team. It's Ted DiBiase, then Rhythm and Blues, the Hunky Tonk Man, and Greg Valentine. And <laughs> who could it be? <laughs> who would have known? My goodness. Everybody's got a price for the million dollar man. So without further ado. I will introduce to you now my mystery partner, led to the ring by his manager, Brother Love, weighing in at 320 pounds from Death Valley. I give you The Undertaker. <laughs> the Undertaker, the mystery partner is now revealed. I never heard of him. Oh, take oh, a look. Holy cow. Look at the size of that. Check out them drumsticks, baby. 320 pounds, looks to be 6'9", 6'10", somewhere in that neighborhood, Rod. 6'10", I don't know, it's hard to tell from here. Holy cow! And look at the look on the face. I don't, do you think it's his coffee? Doesn't look like he's having a good time. You think he'd steal the gold out of your team? Huh. There's only supposed to be four members on a team. This guy makes four and a half, maybe five. Let, look at them eyes. We need a little nine-nine time there, pal. Hey, Buckaroo, yeah, look at him. Yeah, he doesn't look friendly at all. Ted DiBiase introduces his mystery partner, managed by Brother Love from Death Valley. It's The Undertaker, Big Ginger, Mark <laughs> Calloway. Now, Piper does his best to sabotage his entrance by making barbecue comparisons about ham hocks and drumsticks. Okay. No, didn't get it. No, he was like, oh, look at the ham hock. Oh, check out them drumsticks. <laughs> Every commentator is JR. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. I think the crowd were like, stunned, as was I, like, fixated looking at this guy. Holy shit. He looks awesome, doesn't he? I would say this is the best he's ever looked in his entire career. He's young. He's well-built, in perfect shape. He does have that mullet, though. Uh, it was an amazing it's mullet. It's a big... Yeah, it's not that mullet. Red thing. mullet. That's a fish, isn't it? <laughs> Um, splicey, I, splicey. <laughs> can you sp- take her face on a fish? Yes, perfect. <laughs> um, Steve, I love Zombie Taker with his gloves, his cravat, with the white face paint and the yeah. uh, purple eyes. He does Undertaker things. <laughs> <laughs> Woodshop, basically. <laughs> yes! <laughs> Personally, Ministry of Darkness Taker. Awesome. 99 is it? Yeah, he was so great. Do you mean the one with the Irish Schmig and the the cow? Yeah, yeah, he was so great. It is the best gimmick in in wrestling history. Yeah, but in fairness to him, he fucking pulled it off because it can't be easy to play that kind of gimmick where you can't show emotion, you can't play to the crowd. You, the only thing you can do is be stone faced, sit up every once in a while, and <laughs> you would have thought that this would have been like the perfect gimmick for like a Johnny No Talent, someone who has no charisma, not a great wrestler, not a particularly good athlete or quick, but like he's gone on to prove all of those wrong. So that in turn goes to prove how fucking great he is, that he can fake being terrible. <laughs> Does that make any sense? Yeah, I'm fine with it. I'm fine with it. <laughs> so Undertaker here, mean Mark Calloway from WCW, who replaced Sid in the skyscrapers with Dan Spivey and Teddy Long. Uh, comes to the WWF would, yeah, what would be the greatest gimmick and vacation time the world has ever seen. <laughs> T- 
Taker's look booked like an absolute monster here. Awesome entrance, stuns the crowd. What a really cool booking. So the Hearts each have a go with Taker unsuccessfully. And then Coco, the Black Heart, gets murdered with a sick looking tombstone. And Taker does his trademark pin. Unfortunately, it's against the hard camera, so we can't see it. Yeah, just how motionless he looks and how he reaches for the tag as well. Like that. I just thought, wow. Staggering awesomeness I've written. I <laughs> many tags in Valentine. <laughs> <laughs> Where did Brother Love find them? When he was off doing his evangelist thing and he passed by Death Valley. Here. Mm, okay, yeah. fair enough. <laughs> Give you that. Um, are the commentators, they're not supposed to know anything about The Undertaker, are they? This is this brand new guy yeah, that they never heard of even before. Then when he hits the tombstone, Monsoon says... I think it's a tombstone and it's over. It's over for that guy. So, he must have known something about this guy. <laughs> hmm. uh, you are exactly right. And this is the problem with taping shows ahead of time. Because they did mention that it was the tombstone at the taping, which is a few days prior to this. Which was Undertaker's first Superstars match. But it wouldn't take place for another month. So, <sighs> Gorilla Monsoon shouldn't have known the name. But he, he just kind of went on autopilot. Oh, it's a tombstone. And then Vince would be like... Rah, rah, rah. <laughs> in his ear but uh, too late you've mentioned it that's it yep. some nice tag team offense from the tag champions as honky tonk man gets caught in a big slam and gets pinned by anvil to even the teams virgil clips anvil's foot and gets blindsided with a particularly wispy clothesline and gets pins only in the survivor series you get pinned with a clothesline yeah it's bad isn't it I actually wanted to mention dusty's son dustin runnels later known as Black Rain, <laughs> started popping up in crowds to support his dad. Million Dollar Man bought all the seats around him at Saturday Night's main event, October 13th, 1990, and got in his grill and it ended up bloodying him up as Dusty was tied up with Macho at the time. So a few weeks later, The Natural, my worst moniker ever, The Natural Dustin Rhodes would accept Million Dollar Man's challenge to last 10 minutes in the ring with him. And he did before being beaten down and laid out again. And then where did he go? <sighs> Blacktop Bully, I think. Oh, That's yeah. right, yeah. <laughs> and he was there for a wet day before getting sacked. <laughs> Big cock bully. For blading, right? Yeah, for blading. What match was King of the Road? Yeah. You made me watch that match like three times. <laughs> <laughs> Shame on them. Oh, my God. <laughs> Taker builds up a big head of steam and delivers a jumping... Stomp. <laughs> yeah. like, like a kick to the head why did you have to jump off the ropes then stop then jump <laughs> this is the run horizontally stop jump vertically <laughs> boot Taker delivers a double axe handle from the top turnbuckle and hooks the leg on Dusty and gets the pin leaving Brett by himself a uh, massive pop for uh, Brett taking on all three heels this guy was getting so over like Outside, Dusty goes to beat up the dastardly brother love as Taker tags in Valentine, who works over Brett. Note that. Taker comes to Love's aid, but the ref decides to count out Taker anyway. What the fuck? And Taker wasn't the legal man? No, Valentine was. And you've said, round robin rules, he can get in. You've no excuse. <laughs> I can offer you an explanation, if you'd like. Go on. This is a tag team match, and when you are not in the ring participating, you should be at your designated corner and holding the ropes from the turnbuckle. And he was not doing such. He was away from the turnbuckle area for more than 10 seconds and get out. <laughs> that works. <laughs> yeah, of course, that was to eliminate Taker without having him do the job. Valentine gives the woohoo <laughs> <laughs> signal, but Brett reverses the figure four and pins Valentine. So it's down to Brett and DiBiase. Hold on, the, does fucking everyone give the lasso thing for their special move? I thought that was a uh, Jake Roberts gimmick. <laughs> to be honest, at least Valentine, when he does the figure four, he has to turn like it was a woohoo, you know? But <laughs> Jake doesn't. He just slaps on the DDT. Yeah. Get on it. <laughs> So this was cool to see Brett and DiBiase go full pelt, and this shows a lot of confidence. A Piper goes him. mental on commentary at this point. He's putting over both men, but especially Bret Hart. He's calling him, like, the best wrestler in this company. This guy is the future. This guy is incredible. Watch him, watch him. And, man, brilliant, fantastic commentary. Did exactly what he needed to do. 
I would love to see in a singles feud Brett and Million Dollar Man and I don't know if this is going to happen but I really fucking hope it does because this is some of the best action I've seen since we've been doing these podcasts between these two guys for it's probably what five six minutes flawless mm. great yeah I definitely agree Brett does his awesome sternum into the turnbuckle spot. It was actually more awesome than normal on this show because he ran into the camera and it looked tremendous. Brett fakes a knee injury. Ah, the knee's gone, brother. The knee's gone. (laughs) From WrestleMania. (laughs) But can't seal the deal with three near falls. In the end, DiBiase rolls through a crossbody and clasps the hands and gets the three. The look on Brett's face, he just shouts fuck to himself. Fuck, straight to the camera. Uh, That's real to him, (laughs) isn't it? It really is. He'd be out with the fucking uh, spreadsheet. (laughs) (laughs) So for the first time in his career, Brett screwed at the Survivor series man that joke didn't come over <laughs> <laughs> two bits of news actually and this is honky tonk man's final pay-per-view match <sighs> Fuck. so he do a quick stint as the heel commentator but would leave before the rumble fretchy not as he'd return in that year 97 to commentate and manage billy gunn's worst gimmick rockabilly, rockabilly. Anyway, Honky Tonk Man, he'd wrestle again at the 1998 and the 2001 Royal Rumble, and he also tried to end Santino's icy title reign in October 2008. Do you remember what it is? Bring out the Honkometer! That was tremendous. Unfortunately, it only went like six weeks, and they should have had it go like six months or something, you know? So what did you guys think of the match? I enjoyed this a lot more than the first match. Absolutely tremendous performance by Bret Hart. And I thought Piper was excellent in this match as well. So big thumbs up for me for this match. And Taker, of course. Awesome. And kept strong. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. I thought overall, really happy. Yeah, Bret was great. And DiBiase was great for the first time in a long time. Wasn't he take on Ultimate Warrior? Yeah. Yeah. He's great. Yeah. Um, a very, very sad news though. One more bit of news. Sapphire. Brown sugar. Brown sauce. The brown jewel. (laughs) The sewer rat. (laughs) Crack whore. (laughs) Meth mouth. (laughs) Sapphire was released just weeks prior to the Survivor Series. So since SummerSlam, she'd been in vignettes um, ringside with Million Dollar Man doing menial tasks like ironing his money and holding his wrestling buddy, Tonka, you know. Before she joined the WWF, she was actually a legit referee. She was a massive dusty mark and like just took her own initiative, you know, following the WWF around until they saw her. I was like, man, we could put them together and be quite something. And when Vince told her that they were splitting her and Dusty, uh, she broke down and cried about it because this, this is like her greatest um, show mark. In the world. <laughs> Um, so she pretty much stopped caring about wrestling after that. So WWF, they never actually explained her departure. She just wasn't there. And years later, Kayfabe Virgil would explain that Million Dollar Man took back all of his presents and kicked her to the curb. Oh, that's mean, isn't it? <laughs> Something a heel would do. <laughs> <laughs> well, I suppose Million Dollar Man proved his point that everyone does have a price. Yeah. She compromised her morals for so money. I proved my point now. Get the fuck out, like... Yeah. She retired from wrestling that year. She actually died of a heart attack in 96, so she was aged 61. But uh, she was clean. Anyway. Well, she was clean for steroids. <laughs> <laughs> we are not nice people. <laughs> Trying to think of... She's now brown bread. <laughs> shower (laughs) Mean Gene is with the Vipers it's Jimmy Snooker the Rockers Shawn Michaels and Marty Jannetty and the team captain Jake Roberts and he's with Damien who's sporting an opaque left eye he says Marty specifically has stood the test of time 
<laughs> How has he stood the test of time but nobody else has? Marty had neither stood the test of time in 1990 or now. <laughs> so that's wrong on many levels. Um, uh, also, isn't Damien a python, not a viper? Yes. <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> but they couldn't call them the pythons because Hogan would have been upset. Brilliant. Fucking Jake's eye. You two are both doctors. Is this in any way realistic? This eye, this weird eye he's got now. The model sprayed him with some perfume. Yeah, that's what happened, yeah? Yeah. And now he's got a see-through eye. There's no way your pupil can disappear, if that's what yeah. you're wondering. Yeah. But it did look really awesome. Freaky, like. It's... Yes, that's very true. It was over the top gammy eye, like. I have to mention, actually, on the 6th October Superstars, the model and Jake were both on the Brother Love show. Martel kept trying to spray Damien with uh, arrogance. And when Jake made a move, Martel sprayed Jake in the face, burning his eye. So Jake was out for a couple of weeks. But getting not a skin. <laughs> he was localised. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what are you trying to say, Steve? <laughs> So he was out for a couple of weeks giving vignettes, getting surgery, healing up. And weeks later, on the 27th of October, Jake returned with one working eye and willing to fight. Shoot-wise, it was just a white contact lens, but I thought it looks pretty awesome. Yeah, it did look cool. Very creepy. The Visionaries. I thought that I didn't actually get that pun until Are yesterday. They? <laughs> oh, because of the eye. Yeah. <laughs> there, I just got it now. <laughs> <laughs> I got it after he said the visionaries. I was like, then it clicked. So yeah, yeah. Wasn't the visionaries an awesome late eighties, early nineties cartoon with holograms and shit? <laughs> yes, yes, it was awesome. It is a time when magic is more powerful than science, and only those who control the magic control destiny. They are the visionaries. You're welcome, Dav. <laughs> <laughs> so the Visionaries, led by Team Captain Rick the Model Martel, Power and Glory, which is Paul Roman Hercules with Slick, and Kimbo Slice's bodyguard, the Awesome Warlord. They're taking on the Vipers, or the Pythons. <laughs> <laughs> Hulk Hogan against the Visionaries. <laughs> <laughs> Hate to be the Visionaries. <laughs> Led by Team Captain Jake Roberts, The Rockers, and Jimmy Superfly Snooker. In the little pictures that they have of all the wrestlers, did you see the Timmy Mallet glasses that Power and Glory were wearing? Yeah. <laughs> the big red things that were on a slant, and you get the little, yeah. oh, yes. Martel's mullet is in a ponytail. It's awesome. Yeah. Blow dried mullet. Yeah. That's how you can tell a wrestler. Like, that's a wrestler's hair. No. <laughs> how you can tell a wrestler is when you're walking through an airport and you see, like, Road Warrior Animal with his big fucking Mr. T haircut. <laughs> 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 that's a fucking wrestler. <laughs> uh, Snooker sells even less than The Undertaker. And you notice uh, they've evolved the hard head gimmick. Snooker's head hurts Roma's fist. The gimmick of this match, well, the first half of it anyway, is that the model is, he's the team captain, but he's giving orders from the apron and doesn't get his hands dirty at all. And he is terrified of Jake Roberts and chicken shit heel. Great I stuff. actually had that exact thing written in my next sentence. Warlord and Gennetti kick off with um, Warlord doing the power guy and Gennetti just keeps on trying to outpace him and outsmart him. And it works sort of a couple of times, but eventually in Vince's world, power wins out. We get a nice double clothesline by the Rockers, followed by a fucking shitty looking pin where the two of them kind of get mixed up and they don't know who's going to pin Warlord. Awesome spots between HPK and Paul Roma. Uh, just really fast paced. Both guys looked really slick. A lovely top rope elbow by Gennetti. Then Warlord catches him when he goes for the second time and pins him. Half the heels leading four to three. And Slick touts his catchphrase, Turn out the lights, the party's over. <laughs> <laughs> Did you see Warlord's selling? It's awesome. And what's also more awesome is that the Barbarian sells the exact same way. So when Marty was trying to outpace him and hit him and fly off the ropes, he'd tilt his head back and do a bit of that. <laughs> 
a, a, a zombie That's post. That's selling, according to the warlord. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe Earthquake was jumping up and down in the back. <laughs> <laughs> That's why Hercules was holding on to the rope so tightly, of course. <laughs> Did you notice how great the Rockers were in this match? I thought tremendous. This is probably the best I've seen from them. Both of them just completely on song. It's great. I thought Marty was better when they first came in, but I think Sean has already overtaken them. No, I'm not quite. And he seems to be getting better at a faster rate than Marty is. I'd go with that. Like Marty was already pretty good. Sean was not quite as good and he had some way to make up and he's quickly making up that ground. I still think Janetti's interaction with the Warlord here was fucking class. Really enjoyed it. And he does have that cell over the guardrail. Has he re- has he re- <laughs> has he recovered from that yet? Um, the blind man bump. My, my sources tell me Yeah. <laughs> HBK takes a nasty looking clothesline and sells like a boss <laughs> by doing the Rikishi spin thing, which uh, I love that spot. I think it looks fucking awesome. Rick Martel re- reverses a cross body by Snooker to eliminate him uh, to have the heels up four to two. Believe it or not, this is the third time that spot was used in an elimination so far. This is only match number three. <laughs> D'Lo Brown. <laughs> <laughs> Model Pearl Harbors Jake from the apron and Roddy calls him a cheap ass. And now it's 2 on 4, Jake and Sean versus the entire Visionaries. Power and Glory hit the Powerplex and the Glory Hole. (laughs) 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 And Sean stares at the lights for three seconds. So it's 4 on 1, the entire Visionaries team versus Jake Roberts by his lonesome. And so Jake comes off really strong in the next segment. So he's he's like a wounded animal. He can only see out of one eye and willing to fight like a baby face should, the underdog. So Jake gets the DDT on Warlord, but the ref is distracted. Model opportunistically sprays more arrogance in Jake's face, but he just turns his face away. I d- didn't get this. He missed him from point blank range. Would you not just like keep spraying him or something? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Run around like... <laughs> But it's a gas. It'll diffuse in his face. (laughs) Jake gets out Damien and chases the model to the back. Well, he hops in pursuit as Damien is wrapped around Jake's leg. In true Jake BS booking fashion, the refs just eliminate Jake via countout. Not the model who was also left the apron area. Yes. (laughs) He wasn't a legal man, the warlord was. So neither was was taken. Fuck! (laughs) (laughs) So the winners are the entire team of the Visionaries, which is an awesome gimmick and first time in Survivor Series history. Mm. And it was the fucking heels! No, I like. I'd never would have guessed this that the heels would have beaten any face team four to zero. Like, and Power and Glory were in this team. Mm. And I mean, the Warlord was. I know we love him, but. That's two pay-per-views in a row they've been booked quite strong. Did you notice that Hercules hasn't learned how to put on his jocks yet? Yeah, right. They the were arse. bet up his hold yeah. today. <laughs> the technical... Hungry bum. <laughs> <laughs> I thought this match was not very good. I suppose the action wasn't that bad because the rockers were good. But once the both of those guys went out, just... And the booking stank in this match. I really enjoyed the match purely because of the, the action with the Rockers. That was fucking great. And it, it, it wasn't too long after they were eliminated that the match was over. So That's I true. didn't get too pissed off. And plus, the Warlord time. looks like a million bucks, doesn't yeah. he? He just looks like someone you want to stick in your main event. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm glad you finished that sentence the way you did. <laughs> He'd murder me in the sack. <laughs> Yeah, Jake booked extremely strong here. The wounded animal, willing to fight, unwilling to job. <laughs> Chases off his assailants. <laughs> Does this angle go anywhere? WrestleMania, it's coming soon. It's infamous, like. You know the match. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. I know the match. Right, okay. <sighs> oh, no, we will wait. Episode 22. <laughs> 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 Backstage, Sean Mooney is with the Hulkamaniacs. Hulk Hogan with best buddies, Hacksaw, Tugboat, and Bossman. Poor Beefer, he must be sulking on his couch at home. <laughs> yeah. We're 
we're dedicating this match to all the men and women all over the world who are all Hulkamaniacs, man, serving and fighting for our country, but especially the men and the women over there in the Middle East right now, brother, that are hanging on and fighting for all of us, brother. And as far as I'm concerned, President Bush, as soon as the Survivor Series is over and me and my Hulkamaniacs prove that we are really survivors, if you need an extra little heavy artillery or if you need any kind of help, brother, we volunteer yeah, our services, yeah, man. Yeah. Well, and as far as I'm concerned, Saddam Hussein, what you gonna do when my team of survivors runs wild on you? All right, back to you, Gorilla. Cheap Pop as Hogan offers to enlist his team in the army after the match, but he, he never does. Yeah, well, what's with that, Jay? Uh, Isn't that like treason in America? <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is. This pay-per-view is really God bless America. It doesn't really get over either, you know, fans aren't that into it. So our next match is The Natural Disasters, Earthquake with Jimmy Hart, the self-proclaimed world's strongest man, Dino Bravo, Haku with Bobby Heenan, and the definite article, The Barbarian, versus Hulk Hogan and friends. It's beep beep, tugboat, hacksaw Jim Duggan, the big boss man and team captain Hulk Hogan who is pretty thin looking Jesus, then definitely not 24 inch pythons today Hogan mm. yeah yeah I, I think he just looks like a wrestler now he, like he doesn't look like ah oh, fucking Hulk Hogan with my massive arms and shit they did have a shot of a fan with a big poster of Hulk Hogan working out and you can see the size of his arms then cut to Hulk Hogan reality it's like kind of two thirds the size you know mm. this is the earthquake and the Hulk Hogan part two I guess but uh I was thinking, whatever happens in this match, this is a Survivor Series match, and they're going to have to do something afterwards. So, you know, there's no payoff to your Earthquake Hogan feud. So, if there's no finish at SummerSlam, that's it. Because, like, Survivor Series, Rumble, you got to wait till Mania again. Mm. So, it's the next cycle. So, you fucking <laughs> clean finish at SummerSlam, God damn it. Yeah. yeah. When Mania comes around, it's probably a different feud. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> Who knows? Monsoon calls the duo of Heenan and Jimmy Hart the Brain Trust. Mm. Bossman hits Haku with basically uh, a bookend for the three. Bossman's moving very fast, and he, he had this customary gimmick of his shirt popping <laughs> open. I think Bossman's looking even thinner than at SummerSlam. This yeah. is like probably his thinnest. Isn't I it? think he gets fatter from here. I think this he is probably a, does actually about yeah. as good as he's gonna look. I suppose that's just what motivation for Top Run does. Remember when Goldust left TNA and he came back to the Fed and he just had so much weight, he looked awesome. Earthquake does a butt thrust in the corner until Hacksaw has enough and uses his 2x4 until he gets DQ'd. So hitting Earthquake twice doesn't get the job done. He has to swing at the ref. <laughs> Yeah. And then he can uh, head back to his hotel room. <laughs> and then he pretends like, oh, what's going on? What, what? <laughs> Hogan takes an earthquake slam and two Bravo elbow drops, but small packages Bravo for the three. There was a fun but interfering spot where Earthquake catches Bossman in a splash attempt and Hogan pushes the boss man over. Yeah, but that was some fucking spot. Yeah. Barbarian kicks Bossman and Earthquake follows up with two elbows and gets the three. So it's down to two all. It's Tugboat and Hogan versus Earthquake and Barbarian. So we get a cold tag to Tugboat. This is like no pop whatsoever. And Earthquake and Tugboat are counted out. <laughs> Was Tugboat not over? Maybe not yet. Maybe, you know, maybe you try again next year. Just wait, know? like, okay. Tyson Kid pop. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, like, there's only so many times that the fans can stand a fucking Hogan mate trying to get moved up, you know, just like, mm, another one. <laughs> so we're down to Hulk and Barbarian. Guess who's winning? <laughs> <laughs> so I have, I wonder who's going to win. <laughs> Much like Perfect's useless heat on Warrior at the end of the match earlier tonight, Barbarian gets heat on Hogan for a while until he hulks up, big boot, big leg, and the average sized win. <laughs> so Hogan is the sole survivor and celebrates for the next 25 years. And it's not even, A, it's not the main event, like similar to SummerSlam, but B, this isn't the last fucking match he's going to have tonight. Fuck, he was just getting it in there while he was there on his own in the ring. This is my fucking spot because he knew what was coming up in the main event. It is his fucking spot though. 
He, yeah, I know, but you don't have to fucking brag about it. <laughs> <laughs> like, he made sure he sabotaged anyone else trying to take his spot. Hmm. So, in the Survivor's Survivor's Grand Finale match, so far, it's Warrior and Hogan versus DiBiase and the entire Visionaries team. There's still one person yet to come on the face side who's going to change everything. <laughs> yes, he <is>. Yes, he will. <laughs> I just felt Hogan really going through the motions this pay-per-view. I'm sure he'd be happier, you know, making movies and his seven million for a month's work, you know. But he can't put anyone over properly, just in case, you know. <laughs> yeah. um, although he was nice enough to get Taker a role in Suburban Commando as one of the alien goons, as you saw in the last OSW review. Which one? The one you haven't edited yet? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, the Coliseum home video release cuts the fans telling us who they think will survive, survive. Most of them say Warrior. One curiously says, Go ahead, Sergeant Slaughter, number one. Hmm. Two fucking trolls. Sergeant Slaughter, he's the best one. <laughs> it finishes with some guy who looks like Brutus' son <laughs> saying, I just want to say to everybody out in the Middle East, and especially to Hot Rod and your niece, hey, peace to everybody out in the Middle East. Come home soon, folks. The WWF and all your fans are pulling for you. <laughs> Who's gonna win? America! <laughs> <laughs> Fuck off. <laughs> mean Gene is at Eggside with Macho King Randy Savage decked out in barbershop red and white. He says he's gunning for the Ultimate Warrior and his WWF Championship. Yeah, what's that about? He doesn't fucking deserve a title shot. He's no, been nowhere. Definitely not. Since WrestleMania 5, he's done absolutely nothing. You can't just walk out and say, actually, can I have that? You know? <laughs> Like, Hogan, maybe. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But you know the way on a Raw, after somebody wins the belt or there's a pay-per-view the night before, you always get like two or three lads walking out saying, yeah, I want a title shot. And then eventually they all get put in some kind yeah, of triple threat right? or yeah, four-way yeah. number one contenders match. Fucking next time, get fucking Trent Beretta to walk out. <laughs> yeah, I want a fucking title shot. He's at least going to get a number one contenders match. <laughs> Oh, God. <clears throat> you know what made me really sad, actually, that Beefer's gone? Especially for the Survivor Series, because I thought he would make a great team captain, because then they could call the team the Barbershop Quartet. Oh. That's, that's not bad. Yes, not bad. yes. You know the way you hate perfect promos? Yes, yes, Because you yes, keep yes, saying yes. perfect yes, over yes, and yes. over again. Savage must have used the word turkey about 45 times in this promo. He called everyone a turkey, except for Jules Warrior, who he called a chicken. And where's the rooster in all of this? <laughs> How dare you? This is his paper. <laughs> Imagine if it was the rooster in the egg. Oh, that'd be great. Oh, oh so <laughs> awesome. Imagine the, a brand new character where he's like kind of turned into a superhero because he was bitten by a radioactive rooster. <laughs> so he's actually turning into a rooster. <laughs> that'd be fucking incredible. He's out coming out. <laughs> to <give> all of <laughs> He's the gimmick the WWF needs. I do Not believe. the gimmick the WWF deserves. <laughs> it's time for the ad break questionarium. Is that Bane? <laughs> this week's one can be hosted by Bane. <laughs> Then get him. <laughs> it's time for this week's outbreak questionarium. <laughs> Who doesn't know if they're coming or going? Greg Valentine, you're wrong! <laughs> the answer is... Stephen the Warlord. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> Maybe it will have legs. <laughs> we'll see. What, their baby? <laughs> <laughs> Kill me.
me. You know? <laughs> Hail to the chimp. It's the face foreigners, Nikolai Volkov, Tito Santana, and the New Zealanders, Bushwhackers Luke and Butch, to defend the honour of America. Versus the heel... Mercenaries! <laughs> Before entering the ring, Sergeant Slaughter cuts a promo at the interview podium. All the heels have camouflage face paint. Especially funny on Zukov, because it makes his head look even bigger. <laughs> it's ginormous. It does look really cool on Slaughter. Like, it looks natural because he's wearing camouflage. The rest of them just have, like, their red dobuk on, these Japs with the <laughs> camouflage face. Yeah. It looks so stupid. Do you know what wasn't cool? Slaughter's fucking five-minute promo on the way to the fucking ring. Kill the crowd, like, instantly. Having to listen to his uh, theme song. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It's great in short in small doses, but not for five minutes. No. He was with General Adnan, but not quite Iron Sheiky just yet. Nice to see no Americans representing the pro USA team. <laughs> <laughs> but surely that like explains how fucking awesome their country is, the fact that four foreigners want to <laughs> four turncoats. <laughs> <laughs> Sneak ups. <laughs> <laughs> so we get the old anti and pro xenophobism, so it's pretty weird. 40 minutes left in the pay-per-view and Piper says we're not even halfway through yet. <laughs> that is a fucking threat. <laughs> Piper had, he just went mental on Slaughter, like he just called him a torn coat and the typical anti-American stuff, but it was really funny. <clears throat> like Slaughter, he was in the WWF prior to like Hulkamania, it was like 1980 to 1984, and he was a face, and he left over dispute for uh, the G.I. Joe TV show and animation and film and stuff like that. So he went off to the AWA and did both. So he was actually in the G.I. Joe uh, animated film. I just had a look at it, and he, when he shows up, he was like, My name is Sergeant Slaughter, special drill instructor for G.I. Joe. I'm gonna mold you maggots into, you know, killing machines. They either become men or they go home in a ditty bag. <laughs> An itty bitty ditty bag. <laughs> <laughs> Immediately, Tito hits the flying forearm on Zukov and pins him, confirming that there is someone lower on the totem pole than Tito. The Bushwhackers <laughs> hit the battering ram and eliminate Sato. And this feels like a piss break match and there's no storyline here. This is just like, get out, come on, come on, come on, let's do it. So the Ariba man eliminates Pat Tanaka following a flying forearm and gets the three. So holy shit, three eliminations in under 90 seconds. The Ariba man, is that meant to be good? So his gimmick is, he's a man who likes to say Ariba. <laughs> That's it. Yeah, it's like Colin Hogan, like the brother man. <laughs> Brother, brother. <laughs> brother, brother. <laughs> uh, so Slaughter is left on his own in record time. Then, the winner of the Freedom Award by the Boy Scouts of America, Nikolai Volkov, works over Slaughter with awful, high, awkward kicks. He was, I was missing them by miles. <laughs> miles. I have this exact same thing written down. They were fucking desperate looking. Shame on him. I guess he's like, I'm trying to change up my wrestling style and this is my face this is what faces do right they they, they lift their legs <laughs> <laughs> someone who's desperate to have a fart <laughs> uh, I just noticed here we're only a few minutes in so obviously Slaughter here it's the four on one this oddly booked Rand he McNally match <laughs> heel in peril <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, Slaughter is scarily windy. I am not looking forward to his WWF career. This is the wrong guy to do with like the Iron Man Survivor Series gimmick. So a snap mirror and an elbow drop later, and Slaughter eliminates Turncoat Volkov. Shades of the Iron Sheik with a scoop gut buster, and it's like an inverted backbreaker, and pins Luke. That was pretty awesome. So this is a four on one angle, but absolutely no heat, even for the heel Slaughter's anti-American gimmick. Because he's not beating up Yanks. He's beating up fucking foreigners. The Yanks don't care about this shit. Slaughter whips Butch into the turnbuckle and into a clothesline and makes a very quick work of Butch. So it's down to one on one. It's Slaughter versus Tito. The taco man versus the ditty bag. <laughs> <laughs> Steve, okay, so it's one on one. Would you want 
Tito to be the only guy on your team representing your team in I, Good Running Get a Win. I'm pretty sure I wouldn't. Kind of a death sentence, really, there, yeah? Pretty much. Tito can't get the job done with a top rope flying forearm. Like, what the fuck? This is your, like, super finisher. Mm. No? Yeah, if you took a top rope pedigree, you <laughs> <laughs> definitely got to get pinned. <laughs> so there's a ref bump. Adnan hits Tito with the flag, which Shane O'Mac sees, the referee, but doesn't DQ. Slaughter slaps on the camel clutch, and the original ref, who's now he's grand, he taps Slaughter <laughs> and waves off the match. So there's intentional confusion as Fink hoodwinks the crowd with his style of announcing and says, Ladies and gentlemen, Sergeant Slaughter... Has been eliminated! <laughs> Jeff Jarrett somewhere is just going, yeah! <laughs> what did Jarrett used to say? You do it, Steve, you do it better than me. <laughs> he used to be like, but yeah, I'm so sorry about everything that happened, Jim, so sorry. <laughs> that I didn't do it earlier! <laughs> It's just awesome. It was great. It really was. Um, so Sergeant Slaughter has been eliminated and the Ariba Man wins by DQ and gets himself a main event pay-per-view payday. How about that? Ladies and gentlemen, Sergeant Slaughter has been disqualified! Yeah! This is the only way he can win by by losing. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Piper had an amazing line. He was talking about how people don't know what they're getting in for when they're fighting Latin men. <laughs> Probably give you food poisoning. <laughs> Either that or they steal your wallet. <laughs> Sean Mooney's backstage with the heel Survivor Survivor Series team as they've all got their gimmick attire back on. Awesome. <laughs> finally, finally, it's time for the shake of the evening as Gene is at Eggside and we're ready to see what hatches. Gene runs down the speculation of its contents. A, a dinosaur? A rabbit? <laughs> Balloons? <laughs> or even the Playmate of the Month? <laughs> Actually, I want to know who the Playmate of the Month was for November 1990. Betcha she was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> the, the rooster might be gone, but we seem to have rooster puns are back. <laughs> <sighs> Some of them cracked me up, though. I think they never should have mentioned a Playboy Playmate of the Month because then people say, oh, that'd be kind of hot. What if yeah. Pamela Anderson showed up or something? Yeah, yeah. No, it's the fucking gooker. <laughs> 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 it's the Japs. Like. <laughs> it's, you're only setting yourself up for a fall, aren't you? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Mean Gene says that, yeah, it's been hot all night, so the incubation period is over. Out pops. Oh, oh there it is! <laughs> what is it? <laughs> What in a world? I love oh my it. God. The gobbledygooker. A man dressed in an awful rooster suit to a chorus of boos. It's uh, Hector Guerrero, isn't it? That's right, it's what Eddie's brother, yeah. Mm. I did not know that. He, he's still with uh, TNA commentating now. Mm. Yeah, I remember watching this with my family back in the day, and everyone groaned when we saw him. It was like... Even back then, where the crowd were so much nicer and easier on wrestlers, mm. as soon as he came out, they were Boo. booing. Great. I was not expecting the reaction to be this bad. You know, I thought you might get a polite clap or something, you yeah. know, but no, they fucking hated it. What did they think was going to happen? <laughs> Honestly. <laughs> <laughs> it should have been Brett in there. <laughs> um, so yeah, me and Gene and the commentators try to salvage whatever they can from this segment by dancing in the ring. Mean Gene is no Jeremy Borash, but I don't know even if he could save this segment. They dance for approximately two eternities as the crowd fart on this failure. <laughs> Some mark in the front row shouts, Yeah! Get down! When they're dancing. <laughs> it's like, you fucking plant. <laughs> <laughs> so, the gobbledygooker, his gimmick was shelved immediately, so you don't know if 
they were planning something with this or to bring back Terry Taylor or whatever, but just got an overwhelmingly negative response and just cut the losses. That's Who the wouldn't want a gobbledygooker versus the rooster match? Uh, be some kind of like chicken coop match. Chicken coop yeah, yeah. match. I have a chicken coop lumberjack match. The chicken coop is surrounded by foxes. Oh. <gasps> That's great. And uh, it's amazing. Can though. there be a truck that pulls up with like mattresses and like feathers and something? <laughs> a bump on it. You should have hit him with a chair. <laughs> Could have scrambled his brain. <laughs> I can't imagine birds being happy about a truck full of feathers coming down. They'd be like having like a human death match and you know, oh, it's grand. You have a nice soft landing. Here's a truck full of skin to land on. <laughs> oh, <geez. laughs> yeah, it's it's infamously bad. But it's really no worse than a lot of the shite that goes on, particularly Hornswoggle. Some raw celebration they had there is like a load of jobbers dancing in the ring. And it was all this just because Tito needed a fucking break between matches. That's yeah. why they had the gobbledygooker. So the gobbledygooker gimmick was shelled immediately, but was reprised in the gimmick Battle Royale, WrestleMania X7. Much like the one man gang. Maurice would wear the costume as a disguise on the 23rd November Raw in 2009 to oh, ambush Melina. Right, yeah. It's much hotter than old Hector, you know? <laughs> and you can routinely see AJ Styles wear a similar costume in TNA. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Yeah, so the pain ends when we cut to Sean Mooney, who's backstage with the face Survivor Survivors team, Hulk Hogan, the Ultimate Warrior, and your boy, Mr. Personality, Tito Santana. They're outnumbered, but something tells me they'll be alright. <laughs> <laughs> Tito cuts a decent promo, and I've in brackets beside it, in comparison to himself, of course. <laughs> <laughs> Hulk Hogan cuts... The first and last promo of this segment to make sure he's the focus, <laughs> not Warrior. Nice. Okay, so it's time for our main event! It's the Survivor, 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 Survivor Series Grand Finale Match. They beat up the heel team versus the face team. On the heel side, we've got the Visionaries with Rick Martel, Power and Glory, and Warlords, and the Million Dollar Man. It's a shame they couldn't come up with like like a team name just immediately. They could be like the rich visionaries <laughs> the richinaries <laughs> versus the face team it's uh yeah hogan and friends it's hulk hogan i was shocked he came out first tito San well he'll get his <laughs> <laughs> tito santana and the world wrestling federation champion the ultimate warrior who is now sporting a wcw purple and yellow face paint as earlier in the night it was peach and silver we kick off with me being angry because Warlord is immediately pinned by Tito Santana with the flying forearm. Immediately, Ted DiBiase jumps on Tito and pins him with a fucking flapjack. Two guys pinned yeah. in 15 seconds. So then for an eternity, the heels take turns battering Hulk Hogan. This spot eventually ends up with Hogan no-selling Power and Glory's finisher and then pinning Roma with a clothesline. Boo. Yeah, another finisher bites the dust. Yeah. What is it with tag teams getting jobbed out in Survivor Series? Mm. It's just ridiculous. It's not like this is a pay-per-view around tag teams. Every match is an eight-man tag team match. A tag team yeah. pay-per-view. Like. <laughs> Ultimate Warrior comes in next and goes absolutely oh. mental on Rick Martel. But then for some reason, he tags Hogan back in and lets Hogan finish him off. It's like Warrior knows he's Hogan's bitch despite being the champion. Like, in kayfabe. Mm. It, usually it's Hogan steals the win. Like, the Warrior would be off going rah, 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 and Hogan come in, big leg drop and get the pin. But mm. this is... Here you are, sir. <laughs> <laughs> but Rick Martel sees this coming. He's a bit of a visionary, maybe. Oh. Oh. And then he runs away and gets counted out to leave us two on two. Hogan and Di Biasi go one on one again, but eventually comes back the boot, the leg drop, and he wins. 2 1 to the faces. And then Warrior comes in, he does his little rain dance, <laughs> and then splashes Hercules and wins. And then himself and Hogan are not soul survivors, but I think they call them soul survivors. And Hogan runs in to count the three with the ref. Ah! <laughs> 
This is the WrestleMania 4 Macho Man wins the world belt. I'm going to celebrate in the ring, which in do my poses. WrestleMania 6, I'm going to give the belt to you and the camera will be on me. This is Warrior winning the Survivor Series and I'm going to get in on it as well. Yeah, I'm yeah. in the ring. By the way, the ref should have stopped the count and started counting to five. <laughs> oh, oh, fuck that <laughs> Yeah, the, the match was okay. I thought it'd be a lot better. It was probably too short to really do anything. It was just pin after pin. Yeah. It really was. Yeah. Alright, I totally get the Hulk Hogan character and that he likes to come in and kind of gate crash celebrations. But in kayfabe, shouldn't Warrior be having none of this and like get out of my fucking ring? Why does Warrior have to be super goody goody and be Hogan's mate? Like, the two of them just are having a big love fest at the end of this match. It suits Hogan, because that's what Hogan does, but it just doesn't suit the Warrior, because he's meant to be by himself, and... Yeah, I agree with you. He sucked. should be... Well, he, I don't think he should be abusive and say, here, fuck off, but he should be a little bit more aggressive. Yeah, he's an, he's an untamed beast, really. Mm. Yeah. He should be, like, you know, alpha male, like, you know, yeah. he should put Hogan in his place, kind of thing. I don't know. Mm. Maybe it's that WWF were worried that he might get booed, because, like, after the first, like, house show after WrestleMania, everyone was just thinking, you fucker, you're sending Hogan off. Oh, we're sad for Hogan. We're not happy for Warrior. Warrior gets booed. You know, so this is him going, you please! <laughs> 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 How did you think uh, Monsoon and Piper did together as a commentating team? Honestly, I didn't really notice them for most of it, but there were parts when I thought Piper was brilliant. Do you know the way Taz was awesome about 10 years ago, uh, just getting the kind of wrestler bits over? Yeah. The only thing I didn't like is, like, he was still a character, and so he was mostly face as well, but he'd slag off some of the wrestlers, so he called perfect, oh, pumpkin head. Warlord is Walrus Face, and he calls Face Boss Man Boob Man. Yeah. Bobby Heenan is also boobs, so you know, a bit lazy there. You know? <laughs> <laughs> um, a couple of world beaters actually. Their thermometer is rising. It's the mercury in the thermometer. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, anything can happen in the WWF, and it all is. The 90s will be the decade of the rockers. Jesus. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, overall, what did you think of the pay-per-view? It w wasn't great. It really wasn't very good at all. This year, wasn't feeling it. I love the ideas, as I was saying earlier on, of the big match at the end. But it just wasn't a very good match. Despite the fact that the card was fucking awesome, and, mo and to be honest, most of the time. Could have done a macho wrestling on the card. Definitely, yeah. Uh, yeah, I definitely wouldn't recommend it. Yeah, I'm pretty much uh, in line with Steve. It took me four goes to get through this show. I, I watched one match at a time and then watched the last two matches at the same time, uh, in the same sitting. <laughs> <laughs> with my two TVs. <laughs> but uh, I thought that the wrestling was good. I thought that some of the booking was okay, but I just, nothing mattered on it. It, it was just like, it, it was just a number of bouts on a show some of them were linked to previous shows, but yeah, I, I, I didn't enjoy it. I wouldn't recommend it. Uh, I'd agree. It actually took me four goes to watch this as well, which is kind of unprecedented. The last couple of shows has been either one or two, mm. you know, with a break in between. Do you think Warrior is an icon? I'd, I'd say he is because everyone knows who he is. You know, casual fans, people who've never even watched wrestling knows the Ultimate Warrior. Should he be? No. I totally agree with that. He should not be remembered as one of the all-time greats. Just from watching the pay-per-views we've watched, and I've said it before, his promos are different, but I don't think they're good. His wrestling is obviously they're, terrible. They're definitely not money-making promos. No. Like, you don't remember... Okay, there's you remember the cockpit door and all that kind of crap. <laughs> but, like, it's not like he's... He doesn't just... It's all rubbish. And then his wrestling skills are terrible. All he has, really, is a look and an entrance and that's enough to carry him through any match I have to do mention he has an amazing look and an amazing entrance so he's got everything going for him just as soon as the bell hits it just <laughs> cockpit <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> yeah, that'll do it for this week, lads. Yep, yeah, great show. Yep. We must press on and see how the Ultimate Warrior does in his next feud. It's 1991 Royal Rumble. How will it fare? Um, <laughs> you'll have to find out next time on OSW Review. Remember, you can catch all of our shows fuck free of charge and in blistering 4 to 3 full screen at oswreview.com. Easiest way to catch us is to subscribe via iTunes at itunes.oswreview.com. Yeah, awesome. Thank you to Matthew for hosting our shit on botchmania.com. Oh, sorry. Hosting our awesome videos on. <laughs> Good night, folks. <laughs> oh, they should be thanking us. <laughs> you made this website so much better. Yeah. <laughs> and to Graham Cawthon at thehistoryofwwe.com who is hosting audio versions of our podcast. Awesome balls. So check out our boys at the TWR Network and Nervy of Nervy Radio. This is Nervy. And our sister sites <laughs> at OSW Chad 5 and Pile Driver Wrestling. So it's a goodbye from Mr. Ozzy. Yeah. And V1. Raptor. And myself, Jay Hunter. And remember, fuck off. <laughs> Matthew. <laughs> <laughs> December 28th. About to come down the aisle at a total combined weight of 589 pounds. Here are Smash and Crush Demolition. Now, Sean Mooney, I wish you would just explain what Jack Tunney's ruling was that concerned the demolition now. Because I'm, I, I'm not, I'm a little bit confused about the whole thing. Well, you didn't see what took place this weekend. President Jack Tunney has stepped in and issued a ruling that there will no longer be three members of demolition. Oh, so what? What he did? Be two who will be allowed to participate in tag team competition. You are seeing the results right here, and uh, it's the first time we are and seeing who those members are. Opponents. Smash and crush. And a total combined weight of 464 pounds. Murder Jimmy, Sean Michael, the What an exciting tag team. Their rockers are Sean Michaels and Marty Jannetty. Very colorful, full of pizzazz. They keep their teamwork together. They might do okay in this match. They're outsized, they're outweight. I think they're outclassed. Plus, I think uh, Shawn Michaels has still got a weak knee right there. Only, well, I think uh, last week, this past week at the Survivor Series, he certainly showed that he was not favoring that knee. And uh, we've talked to him, and he says it as strong as ever. Of course he's going to say that, man. What are the people, people looking at me to ring the bell for? I'm not the bell ringer. I can't believe it. Well, you didn't get very good looks there from uh, Shawn Michaels and Marty Jannetty. The little girls were screaming in the back. They wanted their shirts. They, again, Jimmy, they threw their shirts down on the table by you. Well, hold on. What is this right here? I think I'm taking jackets back, ringing the bell. This is ridiculous. The one thing I'm not really clear on in President Jack Tunney's ruling is he also stated that demolition would be on probation. And I wonder just what act would violate that edict. You you, know, would you care to venture on that, Jimmy Hart? I'll tell you what, I'm afraid to do anything around here anymore. I'm afraid to even sneeze because I'm afraid I'd be on probation. What does Jack Tunney mean, probation? I think that means he's going to be keeping a very close eye on this new version of demolition. Crush and smash. 
Well, that only makes me believe that, that Jack Tunney will start stepping in more often in more matches now and making his little rulings. Well, being uh, trimmed down to two members, they did not lose any power. Crush certainly proven that he can handle any superstar in the tag team ranks in the encounters he's been involved in. The Rockers have to try something more than just strength on Crush. Crush calling Marty Jannetty back to the center of the ring. Well, wouldn't you if you were that uh, an intimidation tactic? Of course. Jannetty, quick to get behind Crush. He should just thump him off and forget about him. It may not be that easy, Honky Tonk Man. Now that is sheer power right there. Cheap oh. shot. This is again. Marty Jannetty so quick. Drop toe hole brings down both legs. Didn't go after one leg, got both. I guess you need to do that to take down someone the size of Crush. They're going to have to use their quickness. It's just that simple. You know, Crush just lifts Janetti up and deposits him on the top rope. You know, Punky, I hear about the Rockers. They got a big fan club already, man. But looking out in the audience tonight, you see a lot of Rocker t-shirts and posters, man. Janetti off the second rope. Right into the waiting arms of Crush. I guess you're used to that honky tonk fan, that adulation from the crowd and uh, all the screaming fans. Yes, they, they, they adored me and, and, and they were my fans and mm -hmm. they still are. And they wanted to hear me sing tonight. I, I sang for them. And, and any day of the week they want me, I, I do what they, what they ask. I say, Jack May, here comes Shawn Michaels. And a very good example of teamwork there. Honky Talk Man, uh, you've certainly been in quite a few tag team encounters. How do you see Crush and Smash functioning together? Think they're going to be able to they, pull it off and find success without the third member? Well, if you'll just give me a chance. They've already been in tag team action for quite some time. Oh. Sean Mooney, where have you been? It's quite obvious they know each other's moves. Here comes Smash. And he was anxiously waiting to get involved in this battle. Now that he's in, he's really going after Shawn Michaels. Back to the midsection. Got a good a good view of that from here. Over the top. Smash. You can see where he went. Reversal. Will he be fooled twice? Yes. So he's going to take more than one clothesline. Flying. Body. Shoulder block there. And finally gets smashed off his feet. He doesn't stay down long. Over the top. I'm going to tell you, baby, the demolition are just too strong and too tough for the Rockers. The Rockers seem to have their teamwork down a little bit better right now at this point in time of the match. You care to take that statement back, Jimmy Hart? Just wait. As time goes on, you're going to see what I'm telling you, man. Look right now. The Rockers are doing everything they can. They're trying to keep them in the corner, making quick tags, quick tags in and out. They have their teamwork down at this point in time. The Rockers right have really cut off the ring. Crush wants into the battle. But the referee backs him off. But you did notice, Sean Mooney, they doubled up when the referee had his back turned to both rockers. Whoa, Marty Giannetti saw Crush. But he didn't see Smash coming from behind. He got smashed. <laughs> this has been a card of mega matches, I can say that, Sean Mooney. Certainly has, and it's not over yet. Giannetti into the ropes. Mass misses with a right, but comes back with that short clothesline. What did I say to you, baby? I told you they were too strong, too tough for the Rockers. Now, you want to take that statement back while I go when you tried to insult me? I was just calling the, uh, the action. Uh, unbiased. 
As I always do, Jimmy Hart. Crush got Marty Gennetti outside. See, their teamwork is breaking down now because Shawn Michaels took the referee, uh, referee away and he shouldn't have done that. They're losing their composure. Michaels trying to come to the aid of Gennetti. Receives a caution from Joey Morello, the referee. Honky Tonk Smash man never lose his composure like that. See, look at the fans. Right now, they sense the Rockers are in serious trouble, baby. Look at the fans. Smash off the top rope. Comes down hard across the back of Marty Gennetti. Now, that's teamwork, baby. Well, both sides have used that five-second cushion to really take it to the other team. Marty Gennetti spun all the way around and dropped on the knee of Crush. You can hear the snap from here. You know, look at Crush, man. He's so big. He's so strong. He flipped Marty Jannetty around like one of those little Hulk Hogan rag dolls they sell around here, man. Look you, at that. You're talking about a wrestling buddy. <laughs> yeah, a wrestling buddy. Whatever you want to call it. That's what he looked like then. I like that. Uh, Hulk Hogan rag doll. <laughs> in fact, earlier in the matches, Hogan looked like a rag doll. <laughs> Earthquake just manhandled him. Crush. With that massive bear hug. See how he's got it locked in. Gennetti trying to break free, trying to get some room to try and break free. Finally, it's the ear clap that does it. And Gennetti's still a long way from getting to his corner and tagging in Shawn Michaels. You see, Shawn, you question whether or not the demolition's teamwork was up to par. There was a good example. Their teamwork is up to par. Well, you don't think they lo they've lost anything? Not at this point in time, no. Gennetti launched hard into the corner. Ended up right on his face. And neither member of Demolition showing any mercy on this rocker tag team. But I'm sure the Rockers expect none. As Gennetti fires back. Slides in. Underneath. Smart Almost move. there. But can't quite get there. Just out of reach. Makes the time. In comes Shawn Michaels. Marty Gennetti appears to be hurt as he crawls to their corner. A smash keeps up the assault. A drop kick from Shawn Michaels. Down goes Smash. Crush made the mistake of trying to come in and paid for it. Great move by Shawn Michaels. Turns to the side and rolls over Smash. It's like I said, maybe demolition. They're just too strong, too tough for the Rockers, baby. This has been a great mega match. The Rockers and Demolition locked in battle here. Neither side wanting to give up. Crush reaches over, holding out of the hands. John Michaels brings him over, the referee trying to clear the ring. And it just gets nasty enough time to kick out. Man, that was close. I've seen more quick counts tonight than I've ever seen in my whole career. Both, both teams working real good together. The teamwork is superb. Nice sidekick there from Shawn Michaels. He tries for the cover again. This match was still too much left. Believe me, the teamwork's going to overcome in this match, Shawn Michaels. Four in the ring. Both Rockers after smash. Two kicks to the checks. Chess drops him. And there shouldn't be two guys in the ring at once. You know that. That's right. Two against one, baby. Look at this, Honky. This should be illegal right here. Buddy launches. John Michaels lands on top of Smash. Look, the referee fell out of the ring. The referee fell out of the ring. Out of the ring. Out of the ring. I think he was pulled out of the ring. The referee going for a three count there. Smash. Just eliminated that possibility. Ladies and gentlemen, 
The referee has awarded the decision as a result of a disqualification to the Rockers. It looked like it was all over. It looked as though the Rockers were going to come out of this victorious. The referee went down for the count. And Crush wasn't about to stand for it. I can't believe it. The referee tripped but out of the ring. This is unbelievable. I've seen a lot of things happen here. These mega matches have been tremendous. Tremendous matches the whole card from top to bottom. Well, we certainly weren't let down here. Great action from beginning to end.